why I stopped helping people. And I advise you. My mother taught me never to give unnecessary advice and not to try to help people if they don't ask for it. I thought she was just unresponsive. But when I got older, I realized that she was right. My mother is a very kind person. Society always insists on the need to help others. Me too. We are told that we should help people just like that, and even when they don't expect it. Of course, this is not wrong. An accidental act of kindness can change a person's life in many ways. But every medal has a downside. And do not hold back the likely alternative outcome. Life is a complex combination of good and evil. There's nothing absolutely good or absolutely bad. There is always something good in the bad, and something bad in the good. The idea of helping people isn't necessarily a bad one. But it's not good by default either. Below are the reasons why I personally stopped helping people, and you probably should too. 1. Stop helping people who don't deserve it. It's not always easy. We were taught that we need to help people. So, now you need to forget how to do it. As you grow older, you will learn that you need one hand to help yourself and the other to help others, Sam Levinson. Startups often ask me for advice. I know how hard it is to make a startup, I develop one myself. Still, I stopped sharing my knowledge for free. People used to ask me out for coffee all the time, just to use my brain. You have several million venture capital dollars in the bank, and you want to get my expertise for free, without even paying for my tea. This is unacceptable. They don't understand that I need to feed my family, pay my bills and meet work deadlines. They do not understand that I will have to make up for the time spent on tea with them later by working until 2 in the morning. If they don't think my time is valuable, then I don't have time for them. If people don't care about you, don't help them. They don't deserve your help. Today, in response to such invitations, I simply name my hourly rate and get square. It's harsh, but it makes my life much easier and makes me happier. People take me more seriously. If someone can't afford my advice, I can suggest another way to make up for my time. Rule 1, never offer anything for free. Rule 2, don't forget rule 1. The next time you are asked to speak for free at a conference, do not accept until you have agreed on an acceptable fee. If the organizers can't afford it, ask for a free booth where you can advertise your business, or free tickets to the conference. This will show how much they want you as a speaker. People will always exploit you if you let them. You don't have time to help everyone. Help only those who deserve it. And better start with yourself. If helping someone makes you feel unhappy, just don't do it. Sometimes you have to be selfish and put your own interests first. Ignore the lifestyle that society is trying to impose on you. 2. Stop helping people who don't appreciate your help. My biggest weakness is that I like to help people. I help regardless of whether I was asked to do so or not. But you never know when this way of thinking will hurt you. One of my former clients wasn't doing very well. My team spent several days analyzing the data to see what the problem was. This was not part of our obligations and I did not issue a bill for it. We did this because we were rooting for the client's success. As a result, we found serious flaws in its strategy and business model. We showed the client our insights, and he fired us on the spot. We did the job out of compassion for the client. But we told him something he didn't want to hear. We lost the contract because we tried to help. And in the end, they made the person hate us for giving them their professional opinion. 
The easiest way to turn a friend into an enemy is to give advice that they don't want to hear. When I offer to help someone, I really want to help. But often people are not ready to accept it. This is normal. Change takes time and people don't always want to change things. Don't give advice if people aren't ready for it. One day they may come and say that you and your advice are to blame for their failures. I stopped helping people who don't want me to help them. Less drama, more time for yourself. 3. Stop helping if you can't help 100%. This is the most critical thing. In no case should you offer to help someone if you are not ready to provide it. I've done it so often and I still regret it. A few years ago, my parents went abroad for a month and asked me to look after the house. I have no idea how to water indoor plants. Some I thanks and some nedavololo. By the time my parents returned, all the plants were dead. If you asked someone who understands indoor flora to help, dad's pets would be alive. And since then, I have not been allowed within gunshot of the pots. If you don't have enough time or skills to help a person, you are more likely to hurt them. It is as if a blind man were teaching you to draw. By offering unskilled help, you are depriving people of the opportunity to find a better candidate. So your kindness in some cases can also hurt people. One of the easiest ways to destroy a relationship with a person is to offer them help that you are not able to provide. In the end, anything can end up good or bad. And we all need to find the right balance between these two extremes. Always carefully weigh the pros and cons before offering to help someone. Otherwise it may cost you time, money and important relationships, professional or friendly. An accidental act of kindness can save someone's life. And sometimes destroy it.